that, that you make that count, particularly at this point of the season when you need sort of physical coming up? Uh, well, it did count. Um, we got a, a fantastic three points from a very good performance. Um, I'm really interested to see our reaction come Saturday. Uh, I was very keen to see our reaction against Thistle after a very disappointing performance against uh, Hearts that I was really unhappy about. Um, I didn't hide my, uh, uh, my anger um, and my disappointment with that. Um, and I'm glad to say that they absolutely stepped up to the mark and put on a, a brilliant performance. Um, thoroughly uh, controlled the match and uh, got a brilliant result. Now, clearly if you're in good spirits, you don't want to take that away. But it's really important that the players understand that that was a, that was a bar set again um, and taken back up to where it had been. Uh, and I don't expect it to be dropped uh, now. So I'm going to be watching very closely over... Um, over the next couple of days and then indeed going into the Motherwell game because uh, the, all it was was a very good performance and a very good three points. Um, it has nothing to do with this week because it's a different team we're playing against. Motherwell have already beaten us this season, which I was unhappy about um, when we played out here at Dent. And um, we need to go to, to Motherwell and put on uh, the exact same application. Uh, and I've no fear that if we do that, then we stand a very good opportunity of winning the match. And of course, I mean, you did you did say you know, there was some tough talking before that mm -hmm. match about the previous game. Mm -hmm. But how pleased were you with the response that you got? Uh, delighted. I was absolutely delighted um, that I got what I was looking for. But to be honest, they owed it to a lot of people. They owed it to this club because they let the club down with the performance uh, against Hearts. Um, they let the fans down. But they also let themselves down because I think they had been improving and and they had found a, a level of consistency. So they, they let themselves down and amongst the, um, the others that I've mentioned. So I was delighted that they, they managed to, to step back up um, against a part at this old side who had probably renewed belief and um, a lot of confidence themselves having beaten Motherwell 3 2. And although it was a game, it was a game of two halves because they got so far in front and then got pegged back. but. They still saw the game out to get a, a big win, so part of this will roll in here probably full of belief, um, and probably looking at it to think right if we beat Dundee, um, it's them it's on the back foot because we've got a game in hand, or we all beat against Celtic, but they weren't allowed to settle. From the very first whistle, we decided that we were going to take command of the match, and that's what I want them to do again on Saturday. And a win against Motherwell really helped push you up the table that bit more. I mean, how how much do you look at that as well? well it's so it's so tight this this table. I've said it so many times that there's not a great deal between so many sides, and three points can just have a, such an impact on how the table looks. Um, I think we we are what we are looking at is of course to is to go down and gain another three points and and just start gearing up to where we want to be. I don't think there's any disrespect or any um, arrogance in saying that we want to, to get into the top six, but you don't get it, you don't get it handed to you. Um, you have to get an earn it, and um, we did it on Saturday against Partick Thistle. And we'll look to do it against uh, against Motherwell. There are some reports that Paul McGowan and Michael Harris signed new deals. Is that the case? No, they've not signed new deals. No, but they're definitely two players that we're speaking to. Um, I think both players that you mentioned have been terrific. Uh, clearly, have have had an impact on so many of our good results. Um, both performed in the in the Tyne Castle game, uh, poor result, and uh, they were given the opportunity to step up again, and they, and they did so. Listen, I think. Um, I've, I've always been pretty upfront with, with you guys and, and the media and anybody else that wishes to speak to me about where, where I want the club to go and how I want to to move on and build a side here. Um, I think we've got some terrific, talented players, um, terrifically talented players within the group and and uh, I, want to, I want to build something here. I'm not trying to dismantle it um, as the season goes on, so we're looking to, to make sure that we start tying players down. Of course, John Nelms will have a huge say in that. How important do you feel it is that these tidy squares down particularly the likes of Michael Harris been catching yeah. the headlines, you know, with his performances and isn't likely probably catching the eye of other clubs? Oh listen, it's it's only natural and do you know what? I'm not gonna get um I'm not gonna get protective over players catching the eye of other clubs because it, it, it just puts out there that they're playing well, which means that they're playing well for my team and hopefully my team was, is functioning well within that. So I I'll, I'll welcome interest because um it means that my boys are, uh, are actually showing how good I believe they are and uh, I want them to stay here. I think that we've improved as a side, I think our brand of football has, has certainly come on um, so much 
since we took over Graham and I in, in, the, in the summer. But it's a start, you know, we're nowhere near where we want to be, but those players who are starting to show that they're very good players, um, the guys that we've introduced to the squad in the summer are showing how good they can be. And that's, that's a start for us to build a team going forward because I want to be successful here. Um, and with that, I want those boys to be successful. And listen, if they bring success to the clubs, they'll go on and have greater success maybe elsewhere. But there's a, excuse me, there's a time and a place for that, and I want it to be here just now. And Jack, can you speak to your team type now at Celtic, uh, having huh. already been a bit of interest from Rangers, a player mm. that you brought in? Does that show you know? Just really, I just reaffirmed what I've just been saying there, and as I said, I, I don't, I don't deal in speculation. I think um, it's very easy to see stories in the in the newspapers or, or, or media where players are getting linked with uh, this team and that team. Uh, all I'm interested in is that they're performing for this club. Um, we've given all the boys an opportunity to play here. We've given all the boys a, a, an opportunity to play in a in a certain style of football that I think is showcasing their skills. It's helping them. It's improving them, and um, hopefully that they see that that has been the case, and they want to be part of what we're doing here. Neil, do you see Saturday's game maybe being a bit of a battle because you'll face a, a Motherwell team that will clearly be desperate to mm. reverse a, a losing run they've lost the last four games. Um, yeah, but as I said, I have to be honest. Like I've been in a situation where I'm saying, "All oh, right, this is your fifth game after losing four in the bounce or whatever, and the pressure's on, and this and that." You expect expect that we just be rolling up the sleeves. We never changed how we played. We continue to state our principles and play, but within that, obviously, you have to show a different side to dig deep. Um, Motherwell have been labelled this big, horrible physical side. They're a good football side. Let's not uh, kid ourselves on. You don't have a successful start of the season, get to a cup final without being a good football side. And yeah, they're physical, but that's something that Steve has, has done there. He's wanted to, to bring guys in who can do both, and, and we have to match that. We didn't approach it right in the last game here for the first half. I thought we were poor. Um, but the second half, I felt we were better. We probably deserved to, uh, well, we absolutely deserved to get a goal when Musa scored a header, a perfectly good goal that was chopped off. Um, but as I said, I want to put that right in terms of a, to, to have a total team performance, which we got on Saturday. And I expect that, as I said to you, it goes back to standards and what they've set. They did it on Saturday. If they fall below that again, they'll be told that that's not good enough because that's when you start to get consistency. Talking about Musa, um, you must be delighted with his double in the previous game, which came, of course, after a, a long run mm. without finding the net. You'll be looking for him to, to kick on now. I'm over the moon because it's so important, the strikers, they, they feel that that's their sole responsibility is to find the net. And of course, as a, as, as a, as a, as a striker, you're signing boys to hit the net. Of course, I'm not ignorant to that either, but that he's got so many... He's got so many attributes to his game, and I think as a striker, you have to have so many um, weapons to your armory. So he held the ball up great, he got flick ons, he made good runs, and of course, he stroked the penalties away. But he's looking to add more goals to his game, but I'm delighted for him. Um, but but the performance on Saturday aside, uh, I think he was excellent, absolutely excellent against Ross County. He was terrific, I think, against uh, Aberdeen. He was poor against Hearts. But I don't think we had many that got pass marks against Hearts, so I kept him in the side because I believe in him. Um, and he came up trumps for the team, and I think the team appreciated his work. I think him and AJ and, and, and back up top were a real threat on Saturday as a front three. They all offered different qualities, um, and they really complemented each other, I felt. But the, but the response from the players because they understood that Musa added something to our game to allow us to get in good areas and, and, and allow the midfield to get in support, I think was crucial to us winning the match. So I'm delighted. And just when you, when you look at where you are in the league table now, Neil, is it, is it very much a case of the only way is up and you're going to pick off the, the teams above you one by one? Is well, that it's the only way I want to go is up. Um, but the table changes so quickly. And as I said to you, uh, like nobody's going to hand a top six place to you. Nobody's going to roll over and say there's three points. Certainly not at home. Don't expect Motherwell to do that. But you have to earn the right. But of course, the only way I want to go is up. Um, and the only way we'll get there is, 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 is continue that uh, consistency of performance and then going bigger and getting better and being prepared to go and doing whatever it takes to win the game. Faisal was in beforehand and talked about the confidence that he has mm. about the weekend and also about the dressing room. Mm. And that's certainly been apparent with all the players that we've had since you've come in in yeah. the summer from there. Would you put that down maybe to being honest with the players when they're not playing well, to give them a hard time, but uh. also when the things are good that 
Well, I think it's important that everybody, like even in your line of work, if, if you go back into your gaffer and say, oh, great question today, well done. Everybody loves a well done. Um, but everybody needs a, a, a wee bit of a, a poke in the back to say, look, you need to give us more. Um, now, whether you rule with the carrot or you rule with the stick, if you can get someone that actually wants to go out and perform um, because they're enjoying themselves, and I think that's, that's where you get a wee bit of gold. Um, and what I've tried to do with every player here is be really honest with them. Um, so, listen, the players know when I'm not happy. They absolutely know when I'm not happy, whether it be training or in a match. I don't hide anything from them. But the same token is, I tell them how delighted I am with them if I get a good performance, if I get a good training session, if I'm meeting my demands, then they get told that because, as I said, it's important that they get, they get told that they're doing things right um, and it's not always, you know, that's not right. I'm that's not good enough. It's important that they get the mix, uh, and with that mix, I think you get a you get a trust from them, and um, so far so good. But it's so early in, in what we're trying to do here. But uh, they seem pretty happy, and of course, results, good results. There's nothing beats uh, winning games of football to help the camaraderie and the closeness of a dressing room, um, and that's what we've done recently. I think. Uh, nine points out of the last 15. It's a decent return. I'd have liked more, but I'm quite happy with that. You mentioned AJ's performance on Saturday. His loan deal runs out in January. Have you got plans to extend that? Uh, I've got plans to have a, a discussion with AJ, yeah. It'd be, I think it'd be wrong of me to start emptying things out in the, in the media, but what I will do is be having a discussion with him because he's been probably frustrated he hasn't been involved the last uh, few games, but he, he came on on Saturday and I thought, as, I, as I've already mentioned, I thought he was a fantastic foil. To, to Musa uh, and indeed back together and um, I'll definitely want a conversation with AJ in fact if he's no left I might have that today and he came into the side in place of Rory Deacon yeah the Rory, Rory's got a, a bit of a thigh injury um, so it's one of these things it's not a, it's not a, it's an unusual injury just now um, and we're just having it kind of assessed by Jerry and, um, and the doctor so we're not sure how long that will keep him out but we'll certainly doubt for the weekend any other injuries? I know Elliot sort of did he take a cart? Yeah, I don't know if he rolled his ankle or he, he got a, a, a wee twist or something. I don't, I don't really know, but he was fine and he, he's, he's not suffered any other effects from the weekend. He's absolutely fine. So everybody else? Everybody's okay, yeah. As far as I know, there's been a couple of wee bumps and bruises along the way, but I'm hoping to, uh, other than Rory, um, from the weekend, I think hopefully I'll have a, quota, a full quota to work with. James Vincent, has he been out all game? Not I know of. Have you got some for him? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Vinny actually played last night in the in the 20s game and did very well in a good performance against Celtic. And uh, you know, I haven't had anything that Vinny's going to be moaning about. And is there any update on Scott Bain? Scott Bain, no. There's no update on that. No. Uh, as I said in there, Scott has been fit, but he's not been selected, and he's actually picked up a wee injury he's got in training. So um, there's no update on his situation regarding what was going on. Today.